Merry Christmas, Game Sayers. Tomorrow is Christmas Day, and I wish you all the very best, and I hope you get lots of presents. So, to start this off, I'd like to talk about the future of gaming. Now, that doesn't include net neutrality or EA and what they've been doing. That's That bandwagon has already left, and I, I was too late to, to get in on that. Uh, I may have mentioned it in previous videos, but I didn't do a full discussion on it. I just, I just hope EA doesn't do it again, which, who knows. So, when I say the future of gaming, I don't mean are they going to add more loot boxes or microtransactions or pay-to-win methods. I'm talking about the different directions that they take within their games. Uh, so the first one I want to cover is... Gears of War 4. Gears, when, when I first started playing Gears of War, it was really good. Really, really good. It was fun. The enemy was interesting. The combat was solid. And just how you could play cooperative mode with your friends made it all the more interesting and in-depth. So I played through the first three, and they were great. Uh, I played through Judgment. I got that with the Gears of War 4 bundle. And that was that was pretty interesting. Got to play the different characters that were in your squad from the previous Gears of War. And then Gears of War 4 just didn't do anything new. Let's, let's face it, it, it wasn't that exciting anymore. It had nearly the same set of characters. Instead of playing Marcus Phoenix, we were playing the son of Marcus and Anya Stroud, JD Phoenix. Well, who cares? I wanted someone new. I wanted someone more interesting. Why not make it a female protagonist instead of another guy? You know, I'm all I'm all for female protagonists, as long as they're interesting and they're strong, not weak or try-hard comedians. The other thing is, it was the same enemy, the same style of combat. There was no nothing new. Nothing changed in it. It was still cover based. Why does why does a name have to dictate what the game is. Look at Call of Duty. They've always done Call of Duty as first-person shooters. Why does Call of Duty have to be a first-person shooter? Why can't it be a strategy game where you build up a, a military base and you send out troops to fight an enemy? <sighs> Why not an RPG? A futuristic RPG or a, a medieval RPG called uh, called Call of Duty. That would make the game interesting. Yes, it's a change of direction, but that's what it needs. And now they've brought out Call of Duty World War One or World War Two. I can't remember. Which, I think it's World War Two actually. And I haven't actually played it. I, I never bothered to get it. I was, but then I heard it's going to have um, was it loot crates, I think, and that kind of spoiled it for me. I I didn't want it then, so I never bothered getting it. I didn't want to buy it. I didn't want to waste my money on on supporting crap like that. But that was their chance to take it in a different direction. And yes, they they took it back to the roots of Call of Duty. But it was still exactly the same as what we've been playing now. Now, Naughty Dog has done not exactly the same thing. They've actually tried to take their games in a different direction. At the end of, they've done four Uncharted games. At the end of the fourth one, if you haven't played it, sorry for spoiling it for you. But right at the very end, you wake up as Nathan Drake's daughter. And that sets the stage for a whole new series of Uncharted games where you play as his daughter. And instead of having like Sully 
as your as your buddy, you could have Nathan Drake as your buddy. You know, he's your father. He's going to come and help you try and find mis, uh, mysterious artifacts and dangerous enemies and and help you solve mysteries, ancient mysteries. You know, that was that was great, and I really hope to see more of that. Uh, the other one they tried was Lost Legacy, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, where you play as Chloe Frazier. And I love Chloe Frazier. She's just so good. Maybe that's because I like um, Claudia Black, who voices Chloe Frazier. Maybe maybe that's why. <laughs> but she's, she's great. I really enjoyed playing her as the main protagonist. Now, if they could do another series, like a side series of Uncharted, where you play as Chloe, and you do the missions, and then you could have, like, um, Nathan Drake's brother come into it, and, like he did in Lost Legacies, make a cameo appearance. Oh, well, he didn't make a cameo. He was actually a part of the story in that. Um, Nadine, she would be great as Chloe's partner. I think the two of them make a really good team, and they're both strong, independent, funny, beautiful women who could pull off a really good story. But now, taking those games, Uncharted, Call of Duty, and Gears of War, you could even add Halo into that. They've all followed the same sort of story, the same sort of gameplay. They haven't actually deviated from that. Now, I'm not saying Uncharted should, because that gameplay actually fits with it. But Gears of War, Halo... I, mean, ha uh, I wish I'd never gotten Halo 5. Uh, I've, I got the big collector's edition, and that was a digital copy, and I couldn't take it back because I hated it. It sucked. The only good thing about Halo 5 was Nathan Fillion as Bucky. And I would rather have played Bucky than Commando Buddy Locke. No, uh, yeah, it's Locke. I, can't, I don't think he's Commander Locke. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's Locke. Uh, Spartan Locke, sorry, Spartan Locke. Yeah. I would rather have played a Spartan Buck than Spartan Locke, because at least Buck had a personality. He had humour. Yeah, right? um, but again, the, the storyline and the gameplay was exactly the same. Now, the story was worse than the gameplay. It was boring. And if you've watched Angry Joe's review, you basically fight the Warden Eternal over and over and over. He's pretty much the only boss in the game that you fight and to me that that ruins the game it ruins uh, what's the, not not the lore but the depth of the game you know like you, you'd think this massive intelligence would have a variety of different enemies a variety of different bosses but no, it's just the same enemy units over and over and over. And it's the same boss, the Warden Eternal, over and over and over and over. And nothing deviates from that. Now back to my original argument. Gears of War 4 could have done it better. All these games could have done it better. But Gears of War 4 just felt exactly the same as previous Gears of War. And that's a shame. If they had given a different character, if they had left the Phoenix family out of it, hell, maybe even had JD Phoenix make a cameo. Maybe he was a part of the Resistance to begin with. Uh, um, maybe make your character the female protagonist. It, it, just, it could have been different. It really could have. And this is, where I, this is where I'm trying to get the point across, is where is the future of gaming? What happens when they make a Gears of War, uh, what is it, 5? Gears of War 5. Are we going to still be playing JD Phoenix? 
are we still going to be fighting the same enemy? You know, I mean, that start that opening scene where you're in that that like barn and you're trying to set this fabricator machine up, and then all of a sudden, this woman's mother closes the door and locks you in, and then they're getting attacked, and these things are running around. I thought, whoa, that's these enemies are going to be amazing. But then you've then as you continue on. You're basically fighting robots, which are so freaking boring and lame. Stuff and robots. <sighs> and as you as you go on, you find out that it's the uh, the the swarm are basically the same enemies from the first one, and they're just waking up out of their their chrysalis state. So nothing nothing has changed with the enemy. The enemy is exactly the same. And this is what if you continued on the story, yeah you were fighting the robots, but then you joined up with them and they said, look, we know it's not you who's taking our people. We need to find out who it is. So let's work together on this. And then you continue on. And as the story progresses, you find out that it's some weird scientist guy who wants, who's been experimenting on the chrysalis of the, I forget their, their actual name, but the swarm. And he's been mixing it with the cog DNA. So now you've got this hybrid class, uh, this hybrid race, a, a, you know, a human and a, and a swarm guy. And it's some of them didn't work out so well. That's that's why they've grown like massive and they've got long tails and things like that because he's been injecting them with the emulsion as well and sodden around with their DNA, splicing them and mutating them and changing them into weird things. To me, I think, in my opinion, that that would have been a better story rather than, hey, here's here's the same bad guys you've been fighting. You know, at least with the cog swarm hybrids it would explain why they have military tactics how they know how to use military weaponry how they have armor uh how they coordinate but they're just waking up out of this chrysalis shouldn't they be weak and stunned and confused and not know who or what they are <sighs> um it's not it's not looking good for for the Gears of War franchise. However, Naughty Dog has taken the right direction, as I've explained that. They they are looking at a brighter future. If they continue with these two different franchises, they could have the Chloe Nardine uh, side setup and then have Nathan Drake's daughter as the next protagonist. So maybe do another full game of of Chloe and Nadine, just a full standalone game, and then have the next Uncharted, call it like Uncharted New Beginnings, uh, and have it as Nathan Drake's daughter. Now, I've just argued that Gears of War, they could have changed the characters, and and I may sound a bit hypocritical here, but with JD Phoenix, it was still um I was still playing Marcus Phoenix. That's that's how it felt. It felt like I was still playing the same guy, the same character. If they'd made it a female character, if they'd made it like Justine Phoenix. A female character maybe it would have been a, a little bit more interesting but it was having a male character fighting the same enemy in the same universe did not change anything for me in that game where Uncharted that end part sets it up uh, at the end of Uncharted 4 it sets it up for the next Uncharted game and playing as Nathan Drake's daughter and having her make all these new contacts and new friends and, and new allies 
and giving her a history and a backstory can really change the the whole the whole setup of the game. And that's that's where Gears of War failed it. Uh, Gears of War Four, sorry, that's where Gears of War Four failed it. So let's let's take a look. Uh, what what made games good to begin with? So there was, I mean, as far as I remember, uh, there was. I started out with games like Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate. I never finished Baldur's Gate. Uh, I my problem is I like I I played Icewind Dale first, so I got used to playing the six characters, and then I moved on to Baldur's Gate, and I was like. I can only make one. Why? Why can I only make one character? So I started playing that, and then I got all these other characters. But they were multi-classed, and I thought, well, I don't want multi-class characters. I don't. Do I have to take them? And if I take them, then they've got their own quest line. They've got their own story. They've got their their own history. And I just thought, no, nah, this is too much. I don't. I don't know whether to stick with them or make my own. So I tried multiplayer. And then I was like denying all these other characters to join up with me, and I was starting to think, well, am I ruining it for myself by doing this, or is it enhancing my own experience if I play with all the the races and characters that I want to play with? Look at Neverwinter Nights. That ah oh, man, Neverwinter Nights is my favorite RPG. If Oh, if they could do a remastered version of that, oh my god, I'd die. I'd love it. But then they made Neverwinter Nights too, and that that was kind of kind of dull, actually. I forgot what I was looking up actually, so I'm going to forget that. So where where are some of these game franchises? going to go. There have been good games. There have been Witcher 3, Doom, Prey. I've just started playing Prey. Uh, I, I don't even think I've gotten halfway in it. Fallout 4. What are some other games? Like, like I said, I haven't gotten many this year, so I can't really say what games are great and what games aren't. I like the I like the new Tomb Raider series. That's good. Hopefully they make a, another one. I know there's um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, State of Decay. I haven't finished that. I would like to, but I get I get lost with with having to keep swapping over characters and you know because I like playing the one character, decking them out with all the best gear, all the best guns, all the ammo, and I can't do that. In State of Decay, I can only take this character out for so long until they get exhausted, and then I've got to take them back, let them rest, take out another one, and then I've got to start all over again, get them all the guns, all the weapons, all the ammo, all the stuff. It's just nah, not not my sort of thing. I don't think I'll get State of Decay two. Grim Dawn. This uh, I read somewhere that this was supposed to be um, what Diablo 3 should have been. So I, I got it. I got it the 21st of the 1st, 2017. Ah, oh, no, sorry, that was last played. Last played. I don't know if I can see when I got this. No. Okay. Um... Yeah, so I, I've played it, and it started out really good, but then when I got to the end of it, I'm like, is that it? There was, there was no really, there was no big lead up, or or dramatic ending, it was just, it, you fought the last guy and that was it. So I haven't, I haven't played that since the first 2017, that was last year. Uh, what else? I got, I got Spellforce three. As I was saying, I, 
I didn't really get to finish Spellforce 3. I had to go back up to the King of Roy to paint. Uh, when I got back, I played it and finished it. And I was really, really disappointed with it. Uh, especially with the ending. I got my review out. Uh, I did I did the recording before I left and uploaded it when I came back and then I started to finish it. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so Spellforce 3. Uh, the other thing is I've also started on my game rating system. As you can see, I've, I've had to cross out a few because I'm trying to it's not very clear, is it? Yeah, anyway, I'll, I'm going to write that out. I'm going to write each step out as, um, like, number five. The game is average. Nothing about it is bad. Nothing about it is good. It's not exciting, and it's not boring. Um, if you've watched Valerian, uh, it's it's the same as that. I was I wasn't bored, and I wasn't excited either. Uh, what else? Uh, I want to get... I want to get Divinity Original Sin 2. But I haven't got the money for that yet, so I'll have to wait. Um, let's see, what games are out? Oh! oh excuse me. A friend of mine that I met uh, a, few we uh, a few months back was telling me he plays EverQuest 2. And I've, I've never bothered playing EverQuest 2. I tried EverQuest and I, I didn't really like the graphics. And with so many expansions, I got lost almost immediately. So he's telling me he plays EverQuest 2. So I jump on there, I start playing, and I find it that I really, really enjoy it. It's fun. Um... Oh, I've lost what I was looking at, yeah. So, I've started playing that, and the quests are just unbelievable. You think you've finished in an area, and then you go back out, you go and speak to someone else, and they say, oh, I need you to go, go back to here and kill five of these things and, and bring me back a flaming core or something, and then... And then you have to go back and, and do it all over again. Or you have collectibles, which are these little sparkling things on the ground that you, you run up to and you click on. And you, uh, my first collection was uh, a variety of feathers. I got hawk feather, eagle feather, uh, raven, and a few other. It was like five different feathers. Uh, the other one was five clamshells, like a turtle shell, clamshell. Uh, like I, said, I can't, I can't remember them off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, now I'm collecting butterflies and bones, and that just adds more. Well, more stuff to do in in that area. So if you've done all the quests, then once you're a higher level, you can come back and do all those collectibles, and you wouldn't have to worry about having to fight the enemy. So, if you haven't played EverQuest 2, I suggest you, you check it out. It is really good. A variety of characters and races. It's really fun. Let's see. What games are coming out next? Black Mirror. Kingdom Come Deliverance will be my next uh, review. After that one, I'll be playing Pure Farming 2018. I might get Pure Farming 2017 just to try it out. But I've never played a simulation before, so I'd really like to do the farming. That that might be interesting. Uh, of course, we've got Far Cry 5. I don't know if I can stomach another Far Cry. You know, you know the thing I don't get is Far Cry 1. If For those people who have played Far Cry, you, you're stranded on an island, and you've got to fight your way through soldiers, and then towards the end, 
you're fighting this mad scientist who has been experimenting on the prisoners and transforming them into mutants. And then then you go to Far Cry 2 and there's none of that. There's none of that weirdness. It's just you going after some arms dealer who then turns out to be your, your buddy and you both go and kill... I forget who, but that... Don't play Far Cry 2. It is so... So repetitive and boring. And I just... I got sick of it. Far Cry 3 was pretty good with Vasquez. I believe that was... That was Vasquez. Far Cry 3. Or was that the... Yeah, no, yeah, Vasquez. Yeah. And then the fourth one... I think it was Primal. No. No, it was... Um, Yulang or something. Himalayas. Kirat. You're RJ Gale. Yeah. Repressive regime of dictator Pagan Min. Yeah. So that was, that was Far Cry 4. And I actually liked... Far Cry 3, I really liked Far Cry 3, and Far Cry 4 wasn't that bad. It was a step up from Far Cry 3 in regards to exploration and combat and hunting. That was fun. I th I might get Far Cry Primal. I never... I played it on the PlayStation or a thing, and I couldn't... I, I can't play first person on controllers. It's just weird for me. So, I don't know if I'll get Far Cry 5. Because I'm not into that whole religious... religious thing. It might be interesting. I don't know. Uh, vampire looks good. You play as a... a doctor who's been bitten by a vampire and then you've got to try and balance your hunger over your medical profession and your your oath never to do harm. So I think that would be really, really good. Vampire. I haven't got a release date yet. Which is good because I'm moving so I can't really pre-order any more games. World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. Ugh. I've I've had enough of World of Warcraft. I'm all Warcraft down. Blizzard, they need to to just stop with World of Warcraft. It is just getting so long, and ugh. many people will disagree with me. They love World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is the best. And Blizzard does nothing wrong with World of Warcraft, but. It is. It's it's garbage now. And now they're going back to Alliance vs. Horde. It's always been Alliance vs. Horde. So I'm I'm not getting that. I'm sick of World of Warcraft. Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, I'm so excited for that. And I feel sorry for all the the workers at CD Projekt Red and for the devs and everyone who is put out a complaint that they've they've had it rough there. Long hours, hard crunch times, really, really bad social and professional ethics going on there. You know, I hope that changes. I hope it all works out for them. And I wish them all the best. Uh, because there's a lot of people excited for Cyberpunk. You really nailed it with Witcher 3. So please don't disappoint us with Cyberpunk. Anthem. I'm a little sceptical with Bioware. Since Mass Effect Andromeda has been such a massive, colossal heap of garbage. So, Anthem had better pull its weight. Better pull Bioware out of the mud. Metro Exodus. If you haven't played the Metro games... Get them now. Play them. They are really good. 
really, really good. Ace Combat 7, I think that's a... Oh yeah, another simulator. It's a fighter jet. I think I'd need a joystick for that, but I don't know if I'll play that or not. That would be pretty cool as a VR game though. Sit there in the cockpit and you're just flying around. Darksiders 3, definitely getting that. I really like the first two. The Guild 3, I've never played any of the previous Guild games. I might have a look at this. There's no release date yet, so I may have some time. I don't want to show uh, any any footage or any screenshots in case I get flagged. Uh, I am only new to this, so I, I'm still learning the boundaries of what I can and can't do. So uh, I'm just going to read them out off of EB website and let you know what I'm thinking about getting and what I'll review. Biomutant. I think there was some gameplay footage of that. Looks like you play a cat. Yeah, cat with a big two-handed sword. Now these these games are on PC. Dead Island Two, nah. I got into the first one because a friend that I met several years ago he played it, and he said it was really good. And I thought, well, I, I haven't played that many zombie games. Like, I haven't even played um, Dying Light. So, he said it was good. I got it. It was pretty creepy at the start. But then having to do all these quests, running back and forth, I, it just kind of lost the plot with me. Because you're in a zombie apocalypse. You're trying to get off the island. Not sort around doing quests. It's just stupid. Um, I don't have the virtual reality PS4 headset, so I won't get any VR games. Devil May Cry. Never played those, but from Angry Joe's reviews, the first one is really good. The second one is eh. Far Cry 5. The Crew 2, I was really disappointed with the Crew, and I won't be getting the Crew 2. Uh, oh, well, I should, uh, just to let you guys know whether it's worth buying or not. I mean, this is what my channel is all about. Days Gone, that looks absolutely amazing. God of War looks good. Death Stranding. I mean, God of War... Would be will be good if they have Kratos at the start, just showing you how to, to hunt, how to kill, how to fight, how to survive in this world. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he gets captured or gets killed. And you, your story starts, say, 10 years later, when you're like 19 or 20 years old. And now you've, you've taken up the mantle of of fighting big monsters and evil villains things like that that would be good but if it's Kratos if you're playing Kratos again all the way through uh, <laughs> I don't know we'll see so Days Gone looks good Death Stranding looks good still don't understand what the hell's going on in that game um, hopefully hear more about that Red Dead Redemption 2, I've started playing the first one. Uh, sorry, no, I haven't started playing the first one. I've played the first one. I've got it on Xbox 360, but it's the um, the, com the reverse compatibility version, so I can play it on Xbox One. Last of Us Part 2, definitely getting that. Uh, don't start Mega Panic now. Starlink Battle for Atlas. What is this game? Oh! 
This game looks amazing. It's a space game. And it looks like you get to explore different planets. So hopefully it's better than No Man's Sky. I never played No Man's Sky, but from what I've heard, No Man's Sky was a colossal disappointment. Ghost of Tushima. Tushima. I wonder if the T is silent, so it's Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Anyway, that looks pretty good. Don't know what it's about, though. We'll keep an eye on that. Space Hulk Deathwing. I've seen that on Steam. That could be an interesting game to play. But I don't know if it's first person. It's a shooter, but it doesn't say it's first person. And the screenshots don't show it off either. Uh, Coke Van Frantics. Rad Rogers I'm going to get. Uh, just because I like all those those um, those games, those platform games where you run along, like um, uh, what's what's the one that's just come out? Crash Bandicoot. God, I can't believe I couldn't remember that. I was actually going to get that, but no. Nah. Well. Adventure Time Pirates of Incheridian. Incheridian. Extinction looks pretty good. That looks something like um, Dark Souls, where you fight these giant creatures. Yeah, looks pretty good. Might grab that one as well. Biomutant, Rad Rogers. Well, that's that's just me rambling on about what games I'm going to be looking forward to getting. Uh, the future of, of gaming, hopefully things change. Uh, we don't see any more loot boxes or pay to win microtransactions, none of that. Hopefully that's all gone. Hopefully Disney pulls EA out of their own butts and we see better games from EA and from other companies who have thought about doing or have done these sort of practices like loot boxes and gambling roulettes. Um, also, just a, an update on what games I've been playing. I'm still playing Witcher. Uh, I've just reinstalled Elder Scrolls Skyrim Special, Special Edition Doom I've, I've almost finished that, I'm on like the last couple of levels but I've gotten into EverQuest too so I haven't stopped playing that yet uh, so yeah, that's that's it guys uh, thank you to those who, who do watch my videos, um, I haven't got many views as 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 you would know, I've, I've only just started, so I don't expect to get like millions of views straight away. I know it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of effort, and I hope these sort of videos will help me feel more relaxed and more confident in what I'm saying and what I'm talking about, how I get that across, how I look at the camera rather than look away and things like that. So, anyway, take care guys, stay vigilant. I'll see you guys on the battlefield. Now don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you want to help me improve the quality of my videos, please support me on Patreon. The link will be down below in the description box. Thanks guys. Bye.